Good afternoon, everyone. We're going to get started. It's four o'clock. So thank you all so much for joining us to discuss the implementation of the downtown pay parking program. My name is Jamie Larson, and I'm the manager of legislative services for the district of Tofino. Pay parking is a really complex topic and council and staff really appreciate the community's feedback and input into helping us get the program right. I'll be moderating the event this evening and after some introductory items, I'll be handing it over to Aaron Rogers, Director of Infrastructure and Public Works. So to start off, I'd like to acknowledge that the District of Tofino operates within the territory of the Tlokwit First Nation. I'd also like to provide notice to attendees that this virtual town hall is being video recorded and will be added to the public record. The town hall tonight will begin with a presentation from the Director of Infrastructure and Public Works, followed by a question period. And please note that we welcome healthy debate, opinions and feedback tonight. However, to ensure a safe space, any comments that include racism, personal attacks or hate speech won't be tolerated and disruptive participants will be removed from the session. So with that, I'll pass it over to Aaron Rogers to begin his presentation. And then I'll jump back on after the presentation is done and go over some of the instructions on the question period. Thanks, Jamie. Uh, and hello, everyone. Um, before we get started, I'm just going to ask Jamie if she can allow us to be seen. I can't <laughs> turn my camera on and, uh, right now. Sure, Aaron, thank you. I'll just sort that out right now. I'll be one minute. Okay. Great, thank you. Uh, once again, hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for attending and thanks for attending on such a beautiful afternoon. Uh, today, I'm going to be running through a presentation um, or a version of a presentation that I've uh, presented to Council uh, a number of times over the, of the past two or three months, uh, included uh, as well, or in addition to that uh, presentation I've been uh, presenting to Council, will be uh, a section about what we've heard so far and so it'll be a bit of a, a, a hybrid presentation and the the idea is for me to to explain uh you know where where we are why we are where we are uh, where we're going and then uh to sort of have a conversation uh and try to answer some questions as best i can any questions that i can't answer today in the moment uh, i would be happy to continue the conversation uh after the meeting uh through the park the parking at Tofino dot CA uh, email account, uh, which I'm answering on a, on a daily basis. So hopefully I can answer everything uh, today, but if not, there definitely um, we can follow up afterwards and, and, and go from there. So first of all, um, why are we doing this? Um, we have a, a fair amount of policies, uh, both you know a de decades old, uh, as well as a little bit more recent. Uh, that would suggest um, that managing parking and, and pay parking are, are something for the district to, to, to look at. But from the from the immediate see, uh, the immediate issue or the immediate policy that, that I refer to is as council strategic priorities. So um, the strategic priorities that council has set out for uh, the next or the years from 2021 20, to 2023 were to incentivize, prioritize, and emphasize a rapid transition to sustainable mobility. Uh, plan for and manage the costs and risks of Tofino's aging infrastructure using comprehensive asset management planning as a foundation for this work, and to develop the new infrastructure required to meet community needs. To do that, we would most likely need to expand municipal revenue sources, and pay parking does that for us, uh, and also at the same time, understanding and managing the benefits and challenges of tourism uh, on the community. The background, uh, so parking uh, really got underway in Tofino um, or uh, an organized look at parking got underway in Tofino uh, in 1999. There was a, a parking plan developed uh, that has identified many of the same concerns and issues that we face today, uh, a lack of parking, parking being busy during uh, 
certain hours, uh, a lack of availability of spaces. Uh, the 2012 policy uh, that is currently in force was developed uh, based on this parking plan, as well as some uh, on the ground studies that we did uh, in 2011. The 2012 policy, parking policy, is the, is the basis of the existing program. So today, downtown Tofino has a timed parking system. Uh, the timed parking system is based on the adjacent land use. Uh, and uh, part of that, what that policy will, will tell us is, is how to manage competing uses. In downtown core, uh, we face a, a number of competing parking uses, unlike the beach. Uh, and the policy gives us some direction uh, about how to do that. From 2012 to uh, now, uh, we've undertaken studies and surveys almost every year, I think the exception being uh, 2015. And those studies and surveys are uh, to, to help us understand what's happening, parking, how it's changing, uh, what's becoming busier, what, what's not working. Uh, and both and those studies uh, have culminated in, uh, in the multimodal transportation plan, which we developed in 2019, which has some very specific policies around pay parking, as well as the official community plan in 2021, which also has specific policies related to, to pay parking. All of those policies and that policy and the bylaws and, and the studies uh, resulted in us uh, actioning uh, beach parking in, in 2021. I think everybody is familiar with that system, um, but that was the action resulting uh, from that policy work. As we move into the downtown parking program, which is phase two of, of the parking program, uh, this would be expected to be uh, the, the second part of that. Um, in terms of revenue, um, we're projecting revenues in the downtown based on, on the current uh, plan that is uh, out there on Talk to Pino at about $230,000 a year net. So that's after expenses. Uh, for 2023, the combined beach and downtown parking estimated revenue is about $700,000. Why do we uh, why do why do we want to have parking downtown? Well, there's three main objectives. We want to ensure that there's availability uh, of parking spaces for the community. So through the multimodal transportation plan process, we understand that the biggest concern um, from the community, as indicated by the surveys that were uh, undertaken, is the availability, availability of parking spaces. So literally, if I go downtown, can I find somewhere to park? Our second objective, also from the multimodal transportation uh, plan, result, uh, comes from a mode shift. So mode shift means, in this case, moving from a, you know, a single occupancy vehicle or a vehicle uh, to other forms of transportation, such as walking, uh, cycling, e-biking, or, or using transit. Uh, and that's to meet our greenhouse gas goals uh, in the in multimodal transportation plan. And finally, you know, the third, uh, the third objective, which we probably talk about the most, um, is the revenue stream. So developing um, uh, uh, an additional revenue stream other than property taxation uh, to help uh, fund uh, projects and infrastructure in Tofino over the coming decades. The structure of the existing pay parking program, uh, it's based, as I said earlier, on the existing times and offshore parking system. So basically we've taken the existing 2012 system and layered pay parking over, over some of the times uh, parking areas. It's separate from the beach pay parking system and I will get into that a little bit uh, later in the presentation. It's intended to be seasonal. So it operate from May through October. It's intended to have limited hours of operations between 10 and 6 p.m. So if you were in the downtown core before 10 a.m. or after 6 p.m., uh, parking would be free. Uh, the pricing is intended to be progressive. So it gets progressively more expensive uh, the longer that you're in a space. Uh, the idea behind that is to encourage people to, to keep moving. There are no changes at this point uh, being proposed for the uh, offshore program. So the offshore program exists within the existing uh, parking policy, uh, as, but, is a, but is operated separately from, from that system. This is what the map looks like. Uh, I know this may be hard to see on your screens. Uh, this map is a draft uh, based on some of the conversations we've already had and some of the information we received from the community, there will be adjustments made to this map. Uh, those adjustments will likely come uh, at the uh, April 24th uh, council meeting. And then I believe we have a, uh, a follow-up meeting, another meeting like this on the 25th, so we can so I can share the, the changes there then, um, but happy to take any questions and I can flip back to this 
later. Uh, everywhere in green would be pay parking and, and everything else basically is left uh, as it is today. So what have we heard so far? We've heard a lot. Um, when I was making the slide, I was thinking of maybe, or trying to, to develop three to four themes to, to talk to everyone about. Uh, in the end, I think I've ended up with nine, um, but that's great. Uh, we're hearing lots of information and, and, and processing a lot of information. So we've heard about resident passes, offshore parking, school parking, employee parking, uh, where the revenue is, is going once it's collected, visitor contributions, alternative transportation, uh, why is uh, it not linked to beach pay parking? And uh, some uh, uh, some comments as well on, on transparency and, and the talk to Fino uh, moderation. I'm going to go through each one of these uh, each one of these topics has one slide, and I'm going to go through those uh, now. So resident pass is probably the, the item we've heard most about. Uh, everybody wants to, uh, a resident pass, whether that be free or or for a fee. Uh, we've also heard from uh, residents of the West Coast um, who would like to also uh, have a pass. So, you know, have residents of Ukulit or Area C or the nations. Uh, we've heard a little bit about the downtown pass, primarily uh, in re relation to the cost of the, uh, the second permit, which is currently uh, proposed at $250, but there's been some uh, concerns raised about th that cost. And so we're, we're looking at that. Uh, staff are actively considering uh, this idea um, and hope to have more information for both council and the community uh, through the you know, 24th council meeting and, and the 25th meeting uh, uh, later this month. Some of our considerations um, and probably the, the main consideration is that a resident pass is contrary to the three objectives that I described earlier um, about uh, ensuring there's an open spaces uh, mode shift and uh, revenue streams. And so this is something we're trying to figure out if it's something we can balance. Uh, and, uh, and I would just maybe say, stay tuned for that. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see uh, what we might be able to, to adjust to, to reflect what we're hearing from the community. The offshore permit program. So uh, it's free. Uh, there are about 110 offshore spaces. Uh, overall, in the downtown core, there's about 800 spaces. That number is a little bit flexible depending on what study you look at. I'm going with the, the latest number from our multimodal transportation plan uh, process uh, project plan. Uh, the, about 400 paid spaces. Uh, if we were to implement downtown paid parking, uh, there'd be about 290 free spaces uh, and about, as I said earlier, 110 offshore spaces. We've been working with uh, Toloki at First Nation uh, since the very beginning of this process to understand what is working uh, for them and, and also what is not working. Uh, those conversations are ongoing uh, and we'll be meeting uh, with, with the Toloki at First Nation uh, tomorrow actually to, to follow up our first conversation. Uh, the offshore spaces are located throughout downtown. Uh, they were ba they're they're located based on land use, uh, which is again this policy from the from the 2012 policy. Uh, about a third of them are near the dock, and I would say the offshore parking need is critical. It's critical in a different way than it is for residents or visitors to Fino. Um, folks who live offshore uh, need to make it back to where they live, and and parking. Uh, in our communities is, is a big part of that. So, so I would say that of the all the competing needs, this, this is likely the, the most critical one. Uh, any concrete action? So we've heard a lot about building a parking lot, building uh, a parkade. Uh, it's gonna require uh, a partnership between ourselves as a municipality, between First Nations, federal, provincial governments. Uh, currently the District of Tofino does not have the land to build uh, a parking structure. We don't have the funds to build a parking structure, uh, and we would if and we would need a partnership uh, with multiple levels of government to achieve something like that. Uh, and so I just wanted to highlight that now, as I have heard a lot about it. But I would say uh, this is probably not something that's possible in the past. In the in, sorry, won't be possible for the, at least the next decade. Right now, the provincial and federal governments are providing housing. Oh, sorry, funds for housing, so we can put people in houses. I don't see them providing uh, funds to house cars. School parking. So we've heard a lot about uh, parking in and around uh, Wickedness Elementary School, uh, the need for parking for parents, uh, parking you know during school events, pick up and drop offs, 
including buses. Uh, we're, we're, we've already adjusted the parking map. It isn't adjusted on, on these slides, but will be adjusted for the 24th meeting to accommodate uh, what we're hearing and, and to provide some uh, parent parking uh, around the school. We're still trying to figure out what, exactly what that might look like, but we're, we're pretty sure uh, we know where. Employee parking, um, downtown pay parking is a, going to be a cost to employees or potentially their employers. Uh, we've heard concerns that the time parking will be full and that it must, they, they will have to move vehicles during shifts depending on, on when they're working. Uh, those two uh, items uh, may, may be true. Uh, I would say that in terms of moving vehicles, we already have a time program. So likely those vehicles are already being moved. Um, but um, to address this concern, we're gonna be meeting with the Chamber of Commerce tomorrow morning to discuss the idea of on-site parking for employees and asking employers to push their uh, patrons uh, parking onto the street uh, where they can either park in the time spaces or uh, in the pay spaces. And also gonna be floating the idea of, uh, of an employee pass. Uh, and so tomorrow will be uh, the first uh, part of that uh, pro uh, feedback. I just wanna take a second to, to highlight the fact that I've heard the comments about, you know, uh, the offshore communities are growing or, and, and Tofino is growing. And so are businesses and, and more businesses means more employees, which means more demand for parking. And I say this to illustrate the fact that parking is not going to be, it's not a problem to be solved. We're not gonna build our way out of the parking issue. So what we have to do is manage it and managing it in this case for this year uh, is means pay parking. If we move to rewards a resident permit syst uh, system, um, this, this, this issue may get encompassed uh, within uh, that process. And so we'll just stay tuned and, and, and see where we're at. Revenue allocation, fancy word for where is the cash going? Um, a council decision uh, on this item is expected in, in the next couple of weeks. Uh, we've heard a lot of ideas. We've heard ideas about uh, repairs of roads, repairs to sidewalks or replacements, uh, storm drainage improvements uh, and upgrades, the recreation facility, transit, housing. Uh, there's lots of things we could uh, use uh, pay parking revenue for. And this will be a conversation uh, at council, likely at the April 18th uh, budget meeting. I just wanted to throw some references in here uh, related, to allocate, uh, related to revenues. Um, in Tofino, uh, 35,000 is roughly equivalent to a 1% uh, taxation increase. Uh, so if we're looking, and we are forecasting increase in the next five years for pay parking at about a million dollars a year, uh, building to, the, to a million dollars a year, that represents a significant amount of, uh, of taxation dollars uh, that we could uh, avoid. Uh, we could avoid increasing taxation. Um, I can tell you uh, as a director of infrastructure and public works, uh, that we have uh, multiple projects uh, over the coming five years that are multiple millions of dollars. Some of these projects are funded through grants when we're lucky. Some are funded through utility uh, uh, revenues to and CNI levy. Um, but uh, the when it comes to the to the spec specifically to roads, sidewalks, and storm drainage, uh, we're, we always are, are are struggling to find those funds. Uh, infrastructure from the 80s and earlier is, is at its end of life uh, throughout the district. We have uh, unsafe or non-existent sidewalks. Our storm sewer system is, is consistently now being overwhelmed by the, the stronger and more intense uh, rainfall events that we're seeing. Uh, the, uh, at this point, improvements to those, uh, those services come out of uh, taxation. In the water and so I, I, the last point here is, is about the water and sewer utilities. So those are utilities that are provided to the community at a fee for service basis. Uh, we all pay our, our water bills or we pay our, our sewer bills and that funds the operation of these services. We don't have the same sort of fees for road sidewalks and drainage. The, the, the cost of those uh, utilities comes out of, uh, out of taxation. Visitor contributions, everybody wants somebody else to pay. Um, I, the majority of revenue will be from visitors. Uh, the District of Tofino or District of Residents will pay a small portion of, uh, of those contributions. Uh, again, the, the, the intense program isn't to, uh, to, to be punitive to residents. It's just that we, we're trying to develop a system um, that achieves its objectives. One way that I've looked at this um, is 
as a as an annual grant. So I spend a lot of my year writing grants for the District of Fino. A recent grant uh, that we were successful in in getting was about a twenty five percent of a two million dollar road project for Mackenzie Beach Road. So hopefully we'll be paving Mackenzie Beach Road later this year. The development of that grant in staff time is probably anywhere between two to four weeks of staff time to get a, a grant plus consultant time to develop uh, plans. That amount of work got us 25% of a $2 million grant. If we can take the park pay parking revenues and think about that as a grant, that's a million dollars every year that we're receiving to help fund the projects that we need to, to complete. Talk to Fino moderation. So there has been some uh, conversation and some comments about uh, the District of Fino removing posts from Talk to Fino. We do not remove posts. Uh, we work within an, uh, our, our Talk to Fino uh, platform is based on uh, a, a, a service called Bang the Table. Uh, they have uh, in-house moderation. Uh, I believe they use AI chatbots or AI bots uh, to, to comb uh, comments for you know poor language or hate speech. Uh, and then those are removed. Uh, they're, once they're removed by the, the, the moderator, again, not us, uh, they're forwarded to us and we review them uh, and that we can also ask someone to repost uh, taking out those type of words. So I just wanted to be clear to me, we're not removing posts. The platform is moder moderated uh, by, our, by our engagement software. Uh, I would also like to add, uh, we've also heard some comments uh, on our, so about our social media outreach. Uh, I just wanted to let everyone know, remind everybody that we don't, Oh, we don't have our comments are not open uh, on any of our social media. That's a, 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 a communications policy of the district of Tofino has been enforced for, I think, about a year and a half or two years now. Why can't we link to two systems? Two systems are confusing. I agree. They it is somewhat confusing. Uh, the registration for the downtown systems with Robbins downtown parking will be with the district of Tofino. That's one reason it makes it a bit more difficult to, to link these. Um, downtown parking needs are different. Uh, we have to deal with uh, needs of offshore parkers, businesses, visitors, residents, uh, people that need to come downtown uh, every single day or you know multiple times a day. Uh, in 2024, we may look at, at blending the programs um, that likely means a rework of the of the beach program to make that work. Uh, but you'd have to, we'll have to stay tuned for next year to to fully understand what that might look like. So that's it for what I've heard. I only have this slide and one more and then I'll open the floor for, for questions. Uh, so far, the engagement has been vigorous. Um, this is what good consultation feels like. Uh, I've been working at the district for 15 years, uh, mostly uh, as a planner and I've been involved in, in a number of consultation uh, approaches and, and activities. Uh, and this is a good one. This is, this is uh, uh, the district asking a community's opinion on a, on a proposed program. and the community all shouting back at once. Uh, I'm, I'm, I've been really happy uh, so far with you know the, the, the input that we're receiving. I want to let everybody know that everything, all feedback is important. Uh, uh, I also like to um, help everybody remind, to remember to keep the big picture in mind. We have issues um, of, of infrastructure failure and, uh, and underfunding of our infrastructure for decades. I would like, it, I would like to solve these issues now so that our future generations are not burdened with the same because uh, you know issues that we're that we're currently are facing, and I also want to thank everybody for keeping it civil. It's been uh, as much as it's been vigorous. It has been very pleasant. Uh, people have uh, left well worded emails and and are very polite. Uh, and so I've re I've personally really appreciated that. And I just want to say thanks for that. And hopefully we can continue to do that for the the, the upcoming four weeks of engagement that we have left. And finally, what next? Uh, so pay parking is coming to downtown this uh, this spring. Uh, what it looks like is is up to you, Tofino. Uh, we're, we're we're listening and and processing uh, everything that we hear. Uh, we will be adjusting the program based on feedback, as was our intent uh, throughout this process. Uh, there will be some adjustments made uh, at the April twenty fifth council meeting, based on what we've heard so far and what we hear today and and tomorrow from the Chamber of Commerce and Tilkit First Nation. Uh, once that uh, report goes to council, uh, I believe again. I think we said we were meeting the uh, the following day on the twenty uh, meeting on twenty six, uh, and we can discuss what we've heard since uh, then. Uh, we'll again collecting the feedback and maybe and reiterating or developing another iteration of the plan. Uh, so possibly 
the initial iteration of the plan uh, is scheduled for May 9th, but we can also make that a little go a little bit later on that. Uh, continue to refine as we go, uh, deal with issues that we, we haven't thought about. And remember that 2024 is a new year. So this is, you know, this is going to be the first year. It may be a little bit bumpy, but I'm confident that as a community, we'll be able to get it right uh, in a way that works for most of us most of the time. Uh, again, I think I said fourth time now, the next virtual meetings on April 26th. Uh, we're currently installing meters and ordering signage. May 20th is the potential start date. Like I said, depending on the engagement process and what we're hearing, that, that date may slip. But as of today, that that, that is still what, that's still our target. Uh, following this meeting, again, as I said earlier in the in the in the presentation, you can reach me at parking at tofino.ca. I'm the one who's answering those, so you can say hi, Aaron. And you can also continue to leave comments on Talk to Fino. Uh, Talk to Fino is being updated uh, regularly to to as we adjust the program and as we uh, deal with different questions. We're trying to keep it uh, current and make sure the the most relevant and up to date information is provided there. Uh, thanks for listening. Uh, my mouth is dry. I'm just going to sip my water and look forward to uh, the next hour and a half of uh, conversation. Thank you so much, Erin. So, and thank you again to everyone for joining us this evening. The next portion of tonight's session will be a question and answer period with Erin Rogers. And I just have a few notes on how that Q&A will work. So speakers will have up to one minute to ask a question and an additional one minute follow-up question if they like. The time limit really isn't intended to censor anyone, but just to ensure equitable opportunity for all participants to be heard. Participants can sign up to ask a question by clicking on the raise hand button at the bottom of your Zoom screen. And just, just a note that Zoom does set a time limit on the raised hand feature. So if you notice your hand is being lowered, um, just please keep raising it until we get to you. When it comes time to ask your question, speakers will be given access to control their video and unmute themselves to their question. When it's your turn to ask, you'll get a prompt on your Zoom screen to unmute yourself and show your video if you'd like. And then afterwards, the speaker will be reverted back to an attendee and you won't have access to the video and microphone function. Alternatively, if anyone prefers, questions can be submitted through the Q&A function um, on Zoom. And then periodically, these questions will be read out by staff. You'll just need to enter your name and ask your question. And then, as Aaron said, if staff aren't able to fully answer your questions tonight, please feel free to send them to parking at tofino.ca. Aaron Rogers is monitoring that and will respond as soon as possible. So thank you again to everyone for providing your feedback and ideas. And with that, we'll jump right into questions. There have already been a few questions submitted in the Q&A function, so I'll start with those. And uh, I'll just read a couple out and I'll have Aaron answer them. So the first question is, what is your plan for individuals who do not live downtown and need to park in order to work? $18 a day is simply not affordable for anyone, let alone the bulk of our community who work for minimum wage. Thanks, uh, Jamie. Sorry, I was <laughs> muted there briefly, uh, unexpectedly. Uh, the uh, parking for employees downtown is something, again, I, I think I recognize that, well, sorry, let's start, restart. It's something we've heard a lot about, uh, probably the third or fourth uh, most uh, spoke about topic. Uh, our, our plan currently is, is to meet with the Chamber of Commerce tomorrow to try to explore this and to try to understand how businesses may be able to support their employees and failing that, what the potential is for businesses to work with us to purchase employee passes. Uh, so that's what I can tell you today. Uh, I should have more information uh, for this uh, on this topic uh, for the next meeting. But um, for now, we'll be meeting uh, with the Chamber more and, and try to start uh, working through some, uh, some ideas there. Thanks, Aaron. So the next question is about transit. And it says, um, what transit? The shuttle bus is unreliable and only runs certain times of the year. Uh, so again, uh, the shuttle bus uh, is is a project that we've all talked about uh, potentially being uh, partially funded uh, by some of uh, the the pay parking revenues. Uh, the idea again is is to make uh, the, 
the uh, to provide options for individuals getting to the downtown core that don't require a car and don't so don't require pay parking. Uh, the the we, we've been speaking internally about how that system may be expanded uh, for the summer. Uh, how it may be expanded in terms of where it goes. So it might go as far as Long Beach to, to uh, uh, and we're also working with the Alberta Clackwell Regional District on a on a regional transportation alternative since BC Transit is pulled out of the uh, uh, out of the West Coast for now. Um, I think you know to your point, transit is it would make this a lot easier if we had in place. Having the funds to be able to support a future transit system will also be helpful. So. Uh, we have the shuttle for now. It should be better for uh, it should be better this year than it was last year. Uh, it may be expanded, uh, and, and I would say stay tuned for um, to hear about how our conversations with the Alberta Clackwood Regional District go in, in terms of a of a regional transit system. Thanks, Aaron. So the next one says, if this is a revenue generator for the district, what are the profits that the district would lose out on if they gave locals a free pass? Is this something that the district can stomach? Yeah, it's a great question. <laughs> I think it gets to the to the root of, of of the resident pass question, which you know it's currently under consideration. So next year, if we were to run the program as currently presented, uh, we would look to make about two hundred thirty thousand dollars net revenue. If uh, all the if, if someone if we had resident parking so basically I'm, I'm going to give a bit of a thought experiment here so forgive me this is going to be a bit of a longer answer so to consider this thought of experiment we have a thousand active users of our beach program if half of those users went downtown 10 times a week so twice a day uh, and parked for one hour the, the the loss in revenue for us would be about one hundred eighty thousand dollars and so you start to see the impacts of 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 what a resident pass would do to the system and it starts to unbalance it, and so and 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 so um, that is a concern. So if we're going to run a system that, in the end, you know, doesn't meet its goals of ensuring this parking spaces because we have residents parking uh, for longer periods of time, it doesn't encourage the mode shifts because people continue to drive, and it cuts into revenue. There is not necessarily a reason for for undertaking this program in the first place. Thanks, Aaron. The next question is, what is Talk to Fino? Oh, that's another great question. Uh, Talk to Fino is an engagement platform that was brought uh, into the into the district uh, through the 2021 official community plan uh, process. Uh, it's a platform where all of our major projects and some of our minor projects uh, end up. Uh, it's an opportunity. It has a number of different tools, and it allows the community to comment on uh, on these projects. Uh, we take all the, all the feedback from there ends up uh, back with us. And that's how we, uh, we've been doing a lot of our consultation, uh, especially uh, through the COVID years. Thanks. So Aaron, I just want to take a moment and um, we, we've had quite a few questions submitted through the Q&A function. And so I'm happy to get to those, but um, I just noticed that there hasn't been any attendees that have raised their hand. Um, and I just want to make sure uh, that everybody knows if you would like to ask the question yourself, you can um, you can raise your hand using the raise hand function and and that will give you access to unmute yourself. And if you want, you can share your screen, but you're not required to. Um, and so if anybody does want to ask a question themselves, please, please feel free to do that. But if not, I'll, I'll just keep working my way through this Q&A list here um, and ask the questions for you. Jamie, so, can, can you give me yeah. 30 seconds and cue the elevator music? I just want to fill up my water uh, glass because my mouth is dry from all my question answering. Sure, sounds good. Uh, so we'll just take a, a two minute recess, everybody. We'll, we'll mute and, uh, and we'll be back in, in a second.
Hi, thanks, Erin. So I'm going to ask one more question using Q&A, and then we do have a, ha a hand raised. So I'll get to that uh, member of the public next. But um, the question is, is there opportunities for toll fees instead of charging residents or offshore residents? Thanks. Uh, good question. I don't have the answer to that uh, to speak. I, I, I'll, I'll riff a little bit. Um, I've never dealt with uh, tolls before. Uh, something usually uh, uh, imp uh, dealt with at a higher level of government or, a, or like a bigger city, something like London or the province of British Columbia. Uh, so I can look into that for you. Um, perhaps maybe following this meeting, you could uh, just fire me off an email at parking at tofino.ca. And I'll explore that. Um, I'm. I, I would have to. Yeah, I'd have to spend some time uh, reviewing that. So it looks like the hand has been lowered. Um, so I'll just I'll just keep working my through through this list for you, Erin. Um, so the next question is in regard to long term planning for a parking lot outside the district. What consultations, if any, have or will happen with the Biosphere Reserve? Interesting question. Uh, there are no plans for a parking lot outside of the downtown core that I'm familiar with. Uh, I haven't had any conversations uh, with the buyers here about a, a parking lot either. Okay, thank you. And we have had the attendee raise their hand again. So um, Natasha Barrett, I'm just gonna promote you to a, a panelist and you'll be able to access your microphone and your video. Okay. Can you hear me? Yep. Oh, hello. Okay. Hello. So I'm going to look this way. Um, so, yeah, thank you. I was trying to write my question, but it <laughs> went up part way. So it's inaccurate. Um, yeah, and I've been obviously asking you lots and lots of questions because um, I'm very impacted by this in my business. So uh, there are, and you've been sending me great responses and stuff. So I'm getting some of my questions answered, but there's one that kind of concerns me in this whole parking structure when I look at this plan. The first thing I'm gonna say is I am a complete supporter of pay parking. I, I believe it is the right course of action. So um, uh, that, you know, I'm not in any way opposed to it and I think it's necessary. Um, however, in looking at this plan and my type of business uh, in the downtown core, I can't help but notice a kind of bias in the plan towards high turnover and, move in uh, spaces, which I kind of understand because, you know, there's such limited parking down here. However, obviously, I um, my business needs people to park down here and go on excursions. So we're running four to six hour excursions and two and a half as well. We have a shorter one, but sea kayaking doesn't get very far. Sustainable form of travel it requires arm power. It needs time. So we've been here 35 years operating these type of tours. And, you know, they're a very positive experience for people who come into the area. Um, so what kind of, the thing I'm happy about is that we're having spaces that have full day parking. Um, I guess what I don't like about it is just, I see a kind of inequality towards like, if you're coming, um, you're being encouraged to shop and go for coffee, but not really encouraged to go kayaking or do longer excursions that might be operating out of town. So as a business owner, I feel like a kind of bias against my business in the downtown and feel kind of unwanted here, like I'm using up too much space. So and my guests, therefore, are going to get penalized. So it's just kind of uh, like they're kind of getting quite a big um, uh, cost to staying because they're occupying the space. So I guess, you know, I, my preference, of course, would be to see more equality around that, like $2 flat fee per hour. It's just a pay per use. Um, and it wasn't so high at the topper end, like four to six or four to eight or whatever it is, hours, and really great if you're one or two hours. So um, 
obviously if I was coming in for coffee all the time, I'd be thrilled, but you know, I have to look at it through my perspective. So this is a very biased question, but it is setting kind of a, a tone, I guess, for me as a business owner down here. That's my question. Great. Why is it like that? And does, I guess the, you know, to be specific story, um, why is it like, does the town see that kind of variety of what's being offered down here? Yeah, I think it's a it's great it's a great question and uh, an interesting uh, problem. Uh, I think maybe the, the first question I would first thing I would say is that if there's any bias, it's unintended. Um, again, I've I've based this program off the existing uh, parking re re uh, regime. Uh, I, I understand. I can see in front of your business. You know, you've, we've lost two hour parking and have gone to to pay parking, uh, and so obviously a, a significant concern for the type of business you're you're operating. Um, can I just ask? Are you thinking? Are we talking mostly about like a half day, uh, half day sort of uh, events, or is it more to do with uh, like the overnight stuff? Well, it'll. I I have of course three businesses. So I have a right. coffee shop. I have retail. I have a paddlers in. So the paddlers in because you're now going to six will be affected. Um, so obviously I have the overnight for free, which um, is there. Yeah. Uh, and then the it's really the one that I see really targeted uh, is you know just these overnight tours and and like so when I'm I mean. You know, there's a big thing underneath this question, which is about pressures on my business and costs and how I'm having to rise costs without like I've already had to reduce my business in half just because of housing issues in this community. So I'm already getting pushed to the margins. And now I just feel like there's more and more pressures. Now you're talking about a parking pass that we're going to have to pay for for our staff. I mean, I'm just like, how much does a small business take? Right. Like so. When my guests come, they're now going to go, you know, they're going to round up and go, oh, I have to add 20 bucks on to my tour. Right. So that's a kind of disincentive to people when they might see a, a company in another community or outside of town and go, oh, that one I don't have to pay. Or on campus. <clears throat> yeah. Or anywhere else. Like, so, you know, it just puts me at a bit of a disincentive. And I obviously can't tailor your parking program to my business. I get that. But, you know, I just see a kind of inequality there where it's basically the whole um, focus is to say longer stays during the day are disincentivized, right? I think it's a great it's a great comment, you know, like it's and it's not something that's not that we can't change. Um, I know that you probably won't be the only business, you know, like especially tour type business that we have in the downtown core and, and that many other business owners will have share the same concerns that you're raising. Uh, and so just so I understand it and, and, you know, can potentially think about some changes. The, it, understanding that you're supportive of pay parking and 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 stuff to make this work for you or make it less I mean, it work for you but make it a little bit less painful it would be an overall reduction in that day rate you know so that instead of paying 18 dollars a day you're paying something less than that so maybe we're not progressively pricing it where it's a dollar fifty dollar fifty dollar fifty dollar fifty for eight hours and then yeah. you know, free on the other side is, is it, just so i make sure i when I think I, it's pretty expensive for yeah. people like then when they're adding it onto a tour. Um, that's why I'd like to see the bottom raised and the top lowered, you know, it to just keep the profits there. Like parking is parking kind of I, I idea is my perspective on it. I mean, obviously, I also said that I'd like to see all spots hourly parking for eight hours. And you said that can't be possible because of the highway and stuff like that, you know. So also that there is just wherever you parked, it was pay by the hour you know it's just there's no like you get a benefit on Campbell Street to free park and then Main Street gets all the long-term parkers right so that as well there's a kind of couple of things in there but you know I'll, I'll just say the pay one would be great okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll fight on that you know rock or whatever I'll uh, definitely look into that uh it's on my list here my sticky notes uh parking downtown and then um, I'll, I'll get back to you you know uh, either via email or or through the, the the next meeting um yeah the Campbell Street one was a bit of a a shock for us when we first understood it uh the obviously the intent was to do what you're proposed what you suggested um uh, but we're just not in that position this year um right. maybe next year we'll see yeah and I think that's probably what initially threw me was seeing that kind of huge discrepancy right, right. and then you explain that and understood a little more but it still is a little bit disincentivized for longer stays and I mean, I get your rationale, right? I understand that, but it is a reality. You do have mixed-use businesses downtown. 
right. and let that kind of speak when you put that policy, what it says to me as an owner of this business, you know, it's, maybe we don't want your services downtown, right? No, I, 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 I appreciate that. Okay, thank you. Thanks for listening to that. Uh, thanks, Natasha. All right. Okay, if I call you back in, uh, in oh, I would say probably in about uh, 15 minutes, I believe the meeting is over. Thank you. Thank you so much, Natasha. Thank you. So we don't have any other attendees that have their hands raised. So I'll get back to the Q&A function here and ask a question. So the next one is, are businesses still going to be charged for parking by the district? Are businesses still going to be charged for parking by the district? I'm not sure. I don't, I'd actually, I don't understand that question. Um, I don't, we're not currently charging businesses for parking that I'm aware of, unless we're talking about the cash and lieu parking program, um, which is a, that's something that a business approaches to the district about if they want to expand their business and don't have the required parking. So and if hopefully that person can just uh, give me a little bit more detail and I'd happily answer it. Okay, thanks, Aaron. So the next question is, what are the possible improvements to the summer shuttle? Uh, the potential improvements uh, uh, we hopefully would maybe be able to extend uh, the service uh, a little bit uh, towards uh, Long Beach uh, a couple times uh, a day. Uh, in the long term, I know that you know there is there is um, desire within the district to to expand the, the the length that it happens as well. So not starting, I'm not sure exactly where we're starting right now, but the, more like the July August, but expand that out into the into their shoulder seasons a little bit. Uh, ideally, to line up with pay parking exactly uh, would be a hope. So either, you know, we shrink the pay parking time a little bit and expand the, the beach parking and come up with a system that provides a, a real alternative uh, for some people. Uh, and uh, and then, yeah, I think that's probably the the, the, the one initial one will be just a little bit further and then uh, then hopefully in, in the near future, uh, expand the, the time a little bit. And again, that's gonna come down to, uh, you know, funding right now. That program is primarily funded through the resort municipality initiative, uh, and which is great, um, but it's an expensive service, uh, and so any expansion uh, would require uh, further funds, uh, most likely from the district. Thanks, Aaron. So the um, the person that asked the previous question um, about parking near the district um, has their hand up. So I'm just going to promote Amarita Adair to a panelist. And Amarita, you'll get a prompt from Zoom to unmute yourself in a moment, and you can share your screen if you like. Hi, Aaron. Can you hear me okay? Gotcha, Marita. Thanks. Thank you. Um, yeah, I just, uh, what I was trying to ask um, was the first year that we opened the store and then uh, when we renewed our business license, I had to pay $1,000 um, to the district of Tofino for parking. Yeah. So I'm just wondering if that's what where that's going. Sure thing. Uh, so that is part of the Cash and Lou program. Uh, for some businesses where there's not enough parking provided on site. So at Cedar Corner building has a, a pretty a pretty extensive uh, list of uses, including mm -hmm. a very successful restaurant, uh, your business and, and, and the gym. Uh, when that property is developed, it only I think developed nine or 11 spaces. And so at the time, uh, the owners of the building applied for, they, they paid cash and loop for some parking spaces about 3000 per spot. And then there's also provision in our bylaw. If even with that, if there's not enough parking, you can purchase parking so that you can operate your business. And so that's probably uh, without looking too far into it, I'm, I'm guessing that's what it is. Is it's basically uh, because the parking is not there's not sufficient parking on the site, and and you as the last business in that building on through the door is paying for that. Um, I, I would assume that's what's happening. There have been. Uh, sort of adjacent conversations to the pay parking program in the zoning uh, in the in the planning department uh, about uh, maximum parking uh, and minimum parking, which would most likely, if if we were to move forward that, or the district was would, was to move forward that, would most likely eliminate that that requirement because we'd be looking for maximum parking rather than than minimum parking standards. But that's a conversation um, that is yet to happen uh, at the council table. It's a conversation that's uh, that's only in its initial stages in the planning department. Uh, so I think that's probably uh, 
what we're talking about. Okay. Um, can I ask you a quick follow-up um, to that about businesses with those uh, private parking lots? Um, if those spaces are being abused uh, by folks who don't want to pay for parking and they're just using it to park all day, um, do you foresee, like, how is there going to be any support from the district in terms of what we potentially like towing vehicles or um, sort of having to deal with, with the, you know, ramifications that might come from that. Yeah, it's a great point. It's one of the concerns that I, that I know I've raised with some of the, the larger parking lots in town, like the co-op uh, about what this program is going to mean for, for them. So it's sort of like weather, you know, people from going from high pressure to low pressure. So where there's free parking, you know, potential free parking, people are going to move there first. And so I think there will be some impact uh, to individual private lots. Unfortunately, the district doesn't have resources and or their legal rights to, to do that. So so I, 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 it's, a, it's an unfortunate answer, but the answer is no, we won't be um, supporting businesses uh, there and um, other than to, you know, maybe we can provide some additional education or, or something. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Hi everyone, it looks like we lost Aaron Rogers here for a minute. So I'm just gonna um, mute myself and uh, we'll just pause for a moment and I'll see if I can get Aaron back online. Thanks, Erin. Sorry about that. So, so I'll, I'll ask another question on Q&A. And then, um, again, if anyone from um, that's in attendance would like to ask a question yourself and, and use your microphone and video, just please use the raise hand function. So the next question is, you mentioned that pay parking will be used to help fund infrastructure, namely the approximately 230,000 projected revenue. What specific projects will this revenue be directed towards? Yeah, great question. Um, what I said was that we were expecting to receive $230,000 in revenue. I also said that the, the uh, decision on where those funds are gonna be allocated will be decided by council, uh, most likely at the April uh, 18th budget meeting next week. Uh, but some of the uh, items that we've heard uh, are things like roads and sidewalks, transit, uh, recreation facilities. But that the, the decision as to where the funds are being allocated is is, uh, is in council's hands. Uh, or will be next week. Thanks, Aaron. So the next question is: Was the expected number of resident passes that will be requested from Tofino residents? Uh, as we actually haven't considered a resident pass program yet, I, I don't know what that number would be. I can refer to our beach numbers, which go between, depending on how you look at it, 1,000 to 2,000 users, uh, but probably 1,000 active users. So I would probably use that as a proxy number for now, uh, you know, based on on that program. Uh, so uh, that's kind of, if, if we can move forward with this, that's the number I'll be using to calculate uh, the costs and the benefits of, of, of such a program. Thanks, Aaron. The next question is on the downtown residential permit pass that was initially proposed. And it says, based on my understanding, there will be one free annual downtown residential permit per residential unit. Um, does the district know what the average number of vehicles per residence is in Tofino? Uh, I don't know what the average number of residential vehicles uh, is in Tofino. We're estimating that there is probably 
50 to 100 uh, downtown resident passes uh, that would that may be applied for. Uh, that that's but the the actual number of how many cars each uh, resident has is, is unknown. Thanks, Aaron. So we have another one. Um, this question says, regardless of your stated priorities, uh, we, the residents, already pay ever higher taxes and fees. So where is the priority to keep the costs of any pay parking program to residents at a minimum by offering free passes to residents? Yeah, I think we agree. I think I want to keep residents uh, parking to a minimum as well. Uh, I would say that the increasing tax, the, the, the whole intent of this is to to not increase taxes is to is to is to hold the uh, is, is is to hold the line, uh, and so what we're talking about is a user pay system. So if you use the infrastructure, you'll be paying for the infrastructure, or if you use the service, you pay for the service, similar to water uh, and utility rates. Uh, again, it's not our intent uh, to do this on the backs of the Tofino taxpayers. The, the majority of the funds for this program are going to come from vi from visitors, but in order for that to work, we have to. Uh, incentivize residents not to come downtown so those spaces are open for the visitors to pay this is a simple way to answer that maybe i can make a couple comments there and if you don't mind following that um so yeah so currently there are you know there are taxes going to support roads and sidewalks on an annual basis about two million dollars in in the capital infrastructure levy per year is charged on the tax bill to go towards renewal of, of assets. And that's not limited to roads and sidewalks. That portion is about 25% about of that, about 466,000. So um, taxing for those funds and renewing the infrastructure when needed and on an annual basis to ensure that there are roads and sidewalks and that parking infrastructure there um, is quite important to all the residents. What we have here is the ability to to fund the operations and maintenance of those items, which is approximately up to $500,000 a year for drainage, for roads, for sidewalks, and in just general repairs and maintenance and operating of those, those infrastructure pieces, um, have those be supported by um, those that come, come to town and visit and, and will pay for parking on, on the streets. And so when we talk about resident permits and resident, um, resident parking and how we can support those that live here to go to the downtown to you know do the things that we all need to do on a daily basis or those that work in the downtown we need to find a balance to to find a way to ensure that those parking spaces that would be pay parking to um to ensure that we do collect the revenues through that to in order to support those that those items that we are currently taxing for and generate even more funds so we can put that back into the community um, to infrastructure or not even just for infrastructure but for recreation and some other other things that we've heard from the community that would um, you know that would that would be a benefit so this is essentially looking at a way to expand the tax base without solely focusing on collecting from the taxpayer which is traditionally what we what we have to do. We have a user pay system, or we have a tax system for those that own the properties here or those that run businesses here. So, um, you know, I, I'm I'm certainly enjoying the conversation tonight. I'm hearing what everybody is saying, and I think when we go away and take this feedback, we are balancing we are balancing quite a bit here, and we need to find that balance for um, having this program be successful so that the success can be felt by the community. It's not, um, you know, it's not in a way to um, necessarily, you know, only look at, at residents paying for this system. It's those that come and enjoy our town and visit our town. And they are then perhaps leaving something behind that we can invest back into the community. And so, um, you know, while it may feel onerous to, to um, consider another, another levy or another, another fee um, it's you know it's possible that some of those those items that are funded back ta by taxation could be augmented by by some of these funds and not solely by the taxpayer thanks Aaron. thanks nyla 
So we have had a few members of um, or a few attendees that have signed up to to talk. So I will just go through a few of those now and then we'll get back to the Q&A function. So the first one is um, it's a participant loss in and I'm just going to promote you to a panelist and you'll be able to control your screen and unmute yourself. Hi, can you hear me? I can hear you. Um, I guess uh, I have a comment and a question. Um, the comment of the your last statement of um, incentivizing residents not to come into town um, to keep those spots available for tourists. Um, I'm wondering why that's why it's not the other way around to work with incentivizing um, the tourists who already have current parking spaces at their lodges, at their, um, at their campsites, at their hotels to leave their vehicles there. Um, is this preliminary, or like is it primarily looking for funds or is it, tr or is it primarily trying to alleviate the parking issue in town? Um, I'll try to answer this as I can, uh, Cozy. It's it's there's I mean three the three objectives: parking space availability, getting people out of the cars if we can, and then revenue generation. And so we're trying to do all those three things at once. Uh, at the way to do that, uh, it, in this case, is is the price parking. Uh, and so I don't know um, if we if the people if the people visiting stay at their uh, at their Airbnbs or their hotels or wherever they're staying or their campgrounds, uh, then the residents will be paying primarily for um, for that for, the, for that port for, for that third that third objective that'll be primarily on the on the backs of the residents. Yeah, I just I still don't I just still don't quite like I mean there's still going to be people that want to 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 bring their vehicle into town. Um, I'm I'm just. I'm trying to wrap my head around instead of, um, you know, restricting say RV parking in the downtown um, core and keeping the RVs at the the campsites, promoting the um, the shuttle bus for those people. And if they do want to come into town, then obviously they pay for parking. Um, but it just it, it you know I'm I'm definitely. You know, and I think that that should be something to bring some revenue into the into the uh, into the district. But having the people that support the community all year round, um, it's not you're not incentivizing the community to stay home. We still have to utilize the community. We still have to support the communities. We still have businesses to run. We still have jobs to show up for. Um, it's not incentivizing us, it is penalizing us for, um, you know, supporting the community through these busy seasons. Um, so I, I, you know, I, I was, I'm just trying to wrap my head around why, if there is all of this parking already um, at the resorts, at the campgrounds, um, where these people are staying, wouldn't that be a better view to try to incentivize them to leave their vehicles there, have the community, you know, have the local, just like the we have with the the, uh, the parking, with the beach parking, um, have the passes, but also, you know, alleviating the downtown core parking by incentivizing them to, to leave their vehicles there because they now have to pay for parking. Um, because we, there is all of those. Every time a vehicle leaves the resort, there's an empty parking space there, um, taking up a parking space in the district. No, no I, I take your point. And if the so, if the program works, if people are incentivized to leave their vehicles at, at home when they can uh, through, at certain hours of the day, we're going to have a fair amount of free open parking downtown for residents to park at, including the time spots, if, if that if it works. Right now we have a system where there's no incentive not to drive. So everybody drives, I drive, you drive, the visitors drive downtown and we have a parking system that's at 90 or 95% capacity. People are having a hard time parking. Uh, so 
this year will tell us whether pay parking works in terms of keeping cars in the lots, as you suggest, I completely agree. Everybody, everybody came to Phoenix parking somewhere, not downtown uh, when they're, when they're sleeping, unless they're sleeping downtown. Um, yeah, I, I, I think that I would probably, if I could use the beach pay parking as a proxy, it's likely going to, that pay, the, that visitors will be, will continue to come downtown with their vehicles. Like they continue to, to visit our beaches and, and, you know, and allow us to generate the revenues that we, that we have last year. So, um, this is all projections. This is our, you know, this will be our like third year, but our first year uh, of beach of, of downtown parking. So, uh, you know, all all of what we're talking about is is projected uh, and 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 hopes. But if we if we if we do nothing, nothing will change. Uh, we will continue a, a, a downtown that's that's overrun with cars. We'll continue to be able to. Uh, we'll have to rely on taxation to develop the infrastructure and and the projects that 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 we want. We won't encourage people to get out of their cars and and take different options, and that's what we're trying to do. So I think what you're talking about is maybe doing nothing versus trying something new. But but that's how I, I don't know if you want to. I'd love a counter to that if I've got it wrong. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm no, I'm not, I'm very much I'm not saying not to do anything at all. I'm saying to switch the pendulum and to. Um, incentivize the you know for tourists to come and, and stay within the community if they want to bring their vehicle in and take up those parking spaces I mean up until now it's always been free so if they know they have to come into town you know they might think twice about bringing a vehicle into town if they have to pay you know eight eight dollars or something like that for parking when they can just come into town on the shuttle bus and that's more frequent and that's there and that's provided um you know they just want to come walk around do some shopping um and not penalizing the locals that are trying to get to work um you know do their do go out about their summer trying to support the community while this huge influx of people come in um and it's not it's i'm not saying do nothing at all i'm saying just kind of switch it over to it's not penalizing the local community that keeps the community running it is supporting um you know incentivizing the people that have parking spaces already to continue to utilize those parking spaces and use the transit yeah, if if we're successful, <laughs> in, in, in this in this instance, like if we manage to keep people, visitors at their the places where they've rented, we'll probably achieve two of the three goals, and and then we could determine <laughs> next year if it's a success or not. So the two goals we'll achieve will be mode shift. We'll have a bunch of you know I don't know how many people you want to call it four thousand people a day, uh, deciding to take the bus or ride or bike into town, and we'll achieve parking availability because there'll be. As we all know, in the middle of winter time here, there's more than enough parking for all all of us for all the needs that we have for eight months of the year. So we would achieve those two goals. The goal we may not achieve uh, will be the revenue uh, generation um, because there's going to be a fair amount of time parking opening if if this works. So um, uh, yeah, so I, I think I would say that like if 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 we man if this works in that way, then we'll we'll achieve two of those goals. If if um, if my guess is that we'll see more people come downtown because. You know that's what's going to happen. I hear your concerns about, uh, you know, you know the idea of that where that the district is penalizing um, people who work downtown or, or come downtown during those those hours. I, I understand that it's it's, it's a real concern. Um, I think it's especially a concern for people who have to work downtown through those eight hours. Uh, and again, it's something that we're we're going to try to figure out uh, tomorrow or start to figure out tomorrow with the the Chamber of Commerce. Perfect. Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you for that. And I, I really do hope that uh, a lot of consideration goes into the locals that support the community year round um, and and not penalizing them and incentivizing uh, us to, to stay home <laughs> and not support the community through the summertime. For sure. I, I don't want you to stay home. I just like you to come downtown before 10 and after six where possible. Thanks, Erin and Cozy. 
So the next attendee that has their hand raised is Michael Darling. So Michael, I'm just going to promote you to a panelist now. Hello. Can hey, you Michael? Hear me? Yep. How's it going? Good. How are you? I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> nice to see you. It's good to see you too. Um, I have one main question and then follow ups if there's time. Um, my first question is just I would love to have more information on how the number of 230,000 came to be. Um, mostly, I would love to know more about the percentage breakdown between the profit from resident passes and what that was projected to be versus the revenue from visitors. I can speak to that at fairly high level. Um, obviously, we're under contract with Robbins now, um, and I may have to dig deeper into the numbers to get your specific the answer to specific question, but um, but happy to. So I'm going to try to do so from memory at this point. Um, the 230 spaces are based on uh, not based on any permit at all. It's all based on uh, on revenue from 400 spaces, and so it's not divided up between residents parking those spaces versus you know uh, tourists. It's based on the turn of those spaces on whatever uh, calculation that Robin's used for for that estimation. Okay, so just so I'm like aware that there was no consideration of the profit from resident passes? No, we haven't considered resident passes at this point and we're unsure of what the downtown resident passes were bringing because it's so new that we don't know where that number might be, but we haven't factored that into the revenues yet. So the revenues we're talking about are just based on uh, on the, on the uh, turnover of the spaces. Okay. I, I, I should say one, it's also, uh, also on the, the violations. So we have a we have a pretty clear number of what the violation number is based on the last couple of years of beach parking, and so if we, we use those numbers to try to figure out what the violations may be in the downtown parking. It's going to be a lot different. That violation numbers is kind of a, a fairly it's fairly variable because we're going to have so much time parking down. Like there's going to be so much free parking downtown under timed that uh, that's going to be patrolled by Robbins and enforced by Robbins. And so I'm assuming that our violations it's going to be significantly higher in the downtown core than they are uh, at the beach, but I'm not sure what that number is, but sorry, that was, that was the second number that was also, that we also looked at. Okay. Um, my second question was how many meters, if any, and where they would be located? 10 meters. Uh, and the best map for that, uh, I could send it to you. It's the original map. In, in, if you look at the May 28th, Council report. If you go on uh, District Tofino website, looked at the mm -hmm. May or the March, sorry, March twenty eighth uh, Council report for parking. Uh, in the body of the report will be uh, just a, a diagram of downtown and uh, yellow dots for each of the, the the spaces. I could probably guess and tell you where they are because I've walked it a couple times, but I, I'd probably miss uh, one or two. Okay, sounds good. Um, do I have time for one more? Uh, up to Jamie, but I'm I'm happy to keep talking. Yeah, I think uh, that's fine, Michael. Go ahead. Okay, and I just wanted, like, I think we all kind of know why the time period is from May to October. It's because it gets busier in town, mostly with visitors, you know, the number of residents maybe changes a little bit. Um, but I'm just curious of like the decision to charge residents for a specific time period where visitation is higher. Where like, to me, that kind of shows that the 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 burden on the system, the parking system, isn't the residents, it's the visitors. And I'm just curious of the of why that decision was made versus the time period. So I think I'm not smart enough to understand that question. So you're you're trying to uh, you're asking why are we charging residents in the downtown during to say July and August? Uh, why are we charging residents in downtown during July and August? Yeah, just because like I think like the, so, the burden would be the increase in visitation because of the time of year. Um, I, yeah, I guess I'm just in general more curious of like, may, maybe I missed it at the beginning, but like why residents should pay for the problem that is during the busiest times because of visitation. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a great question. I think it's a question we've heard uh, a lot. 
I, I think I've answered it a couple times today, but not well. So I'm gonna, I'll, I'll, I'll try looking in a different way. Like I, the, the way that it's, the question is often framed is, as you framed it is, is why the residents have to pay. And the way that I look at this is that if we want to meet our three objectives, one of being revenue generation, we need everybody to make different decisions when they can. And people won't make different decisions if the system doesn't change. And that includes residents and it includes visitors. And so the reason it's it's pay for residents because it may encourage 10% of the people to get out of their cars half the time and take their bike, opening up spaces in the downtown core in 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 paid areas that the visitors may fill and then and then we receive we get the revenue that portion it also then opens up the turnover of spaces as well and obviously accomplishes the mode shift or you know just not driving in general so that that's why i and again i again the question keeps coming is why are we charging residents and i don't i uh, although that is the outcome of it it's not the it's not the kind of the intent behind it the intent is just to hopefully people ask people to make a different choice if they can when they can um, I, I will still, you know, if, if you're going downtown to the grocery store for, for groceries and, and you're between 10 and 6 in the summertime, uh, you're going to have options of Campbell Street, First Street, the co-op parking lot, um, obviously the different times of the day, and then and then worse comes to worse, you may have to pay $1.50 for an hour of parking uh, somewhere. There's also going to be free parking in front of the pharmacy, obviously it's First Street, and in front of the post office as well. Um, I mean, I think I recognize and probably everybody on this call recognizes those those time spaces are going to be sought after. So I can't promise you that you'll get a spot directly in front of uh, the co-op. Um, I bet you'll get a spot at the co-op. Uh, and so uh, it's, again, it's the combination of these, like not having a completely t paid system does provide alternatives. Um, you know, how that, I think for me, that's the part that we may need to do a little bit more work on. And going back to Natasha's comments earlier in the conversation about is there a sort of just an inherent bias uh, in the timed areas for you know where we where we have parking? Uh, I haven't really thought about that. So um, I think I've rambled on there. Sorry, Mike. I probably give you more information than you needed. That's okay. No, I think I I, I mean I understand. Um, I think uh, yeah. No, just thank you for your time, and it's nice to see you guys. Great to see you too. Thanks, Michael. So we have one more attendee that has their hand raised. So I'll get to I'll get to Dwayne Bell right now. So Dwayne, I'm going to promote you to a panelist, and then I'll take some time to go through some of the questions that were submitted through the Q and A function. Oh. Hi, Aaron. Hey, Dwayne. Hey, how's it going? Um, yeah, so I'll be seeing you at the board of directors meeting at the chamber tomorrow, so I won't uh, belabor this too much. Um, you kind of answered uh, what I would call the first part of my question. So Campbell Street, First Street is going to be free parking with like what I would call severe time limitations there. And obviously you would get ticketed if you were above that. Is that kind of the understanding? Yeah, I have. So basically with the time spots, I haven't we haven't actually decided to change any of the the existing time. So once if you look at the map and you see what the time spaces are, those times at this point in the process haven't been proposed to be changed based on some of the feedback we're receiving today, um, based on some of the feedback that we're receiving online. Excuse me, we may we may adjust those as well. Um, oh, but yeah, but, but so basically the idea would be that Robbins would patrol our pace, our pay uh, streets and as well as our, uh, our time streets. And then if anybody was parking over those hours, they would be issued a, a ticket um, similar as you are if you, you know, parking on time, a paid spot without a, without a ticket. Okay. And then uh, the other paid parking spots will all have time limitations. So even if I had a... No. Nope. Oh, so. so the paid parking, all the paid parking spots will be as long as you want to park. So if you, if you were at the current co cost, and again, this is everything's open for discussion, but at the current cost, you, if you parked in one of those spaces all day, it, would be, it comes up to $18. $18. The first hour is a dollar fifty. The second hour is an additional dollar fifty. Two dollars each for the next two hours. Two fifty each for the next two hours, and finally three dollars each. So it's it, it it it. And then if so, if you got there at eight o'clock in the morning and you park through to eight o'clock at night, you know because you yeah. free parking okay. your side, you'd be you'd be paying for the eight hours. 
Okay, I sorry, I didn't understand it that way. So that that's great. Um, and so my actual question is, is that you you gave a, a figure of about one hundred and eighty thousand dollars that if we if we took the current Robin system, which is kind of like each resident gets three license plates that they can register for free parking, you gave about a. a a figure of $180,000 in loss to this revenue stream. Is that, is that kind of where that came from? It's a thought experiment. <laughs> so please take yeah. it with, with eight grains of salt. Um, oh, 100%. Not, but, yeah, yeah. I'm not here to pull. No, I no. I think <laughs> that exercise get applied to the beach parking. So the beach, so, so this, so the, the, the thought experiment I gave was that right now, currently we have about a thousand active beach users. Yeah, I guess, and, yeah. And, and what I said is if half of those people decided, so 500 people decided to get a downtown resident permit, one permit, not three. And those, each of those people went downtown 10 times a week. So I just said two times a day, going to get your kids or groceries. And again, all this can be changed. And they only parked for an hour. So $1.50 an hour, that equates about $180,000 in lost revenue. That's, that's the kind of, I just use it as a way to try yeah. to understand what the impacts might be if we gave away a thousand free passes and people could park here at any time. So what I was trying to illustrate was that even if you use a very limited amount of people in a very limited amount of time, at a very limited amount of times they come downtown, you still end up with a pretty big hole in your in your revenue stream. So yeah, yeah. the beach pay parking system, again, we're not dealing with the same number or types or conflicting uses that we are in the in the downtown. In the beach, generally, we have large lots, we have a lot of area. People are generally going to either residents and visitors to go to the beach. I don't have business that get that many other than the few businesses that use the beach for their, you know, for surfing and, and what have you. It's, it's people aren't going there for businesses. I don't have offshore residents who are parking down there so they can access their communities. I don't have employees going to the beach. So it's it's just a lot, it, the systems are just completely different. And what happened in the beach program is that we were forecasting revenue significantly higher than what we received. So we received about 300 and $16,000 in 2022 for net revenues for the beach parking. Originally, and I, again, I'm going to go off, off, pay, off script, script a little bit here, but I think it was close to be closer to a million, a half million dollars of revenues. The reason those revenues are so far down is because we did two things. We gave away three free passes to anybody who asked for one. And we, um, our enforcement was very gentle, which is continues to be, and probably will be for the downtown core. We, we're not looking to penalize people. We, we'd rather encourage people to make uh, different decisions versus penalize them. So those are the two reasons that we didn't reach our, revenue expectations so far uh, at the at the beach. So I don't know if that helps. It's none of this is easy. <laughs> I'll say it's no, 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 complicated, sure. complicated. And, and sorry, what, uh, and I've been actively in this discussion for a bit now, mm -hmm. and I didn't understand that we weren't going to have time limitations downtown in the pay parking area. So it's uh, so if you have a free, if you have a, a pass and you go to one of those pay park spaces, you can just park there for eight hours. In this, oh. that's kind of the intent is that we wanted, yeah, we could, I mean, we could look at modifying the system so they have timed parking within pay parking areas. That's not an impossibility, but uh, that's something we haven't explored yet. Oh. All right. All right. Thanks so much. There. Thanks, Twin. Thanks, Twin. We're getting back to the questions that are in the Q&A um, function here. I don't see anyone else with their hand up, so I'll just start asking uh, the questions that have been submitted. One of them is, why are you not working with Robbins to combine the three parking programs, beach, downtown, and offshore? Good question. Uh, how to answer this. So the, 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 there's two separate contracts. Uh, so when we look, when the, the original contract we have with Robbins, uh, I think expires mid next summer. Uh, that was the, the beach program. And when we looked at uh, instituting the, the downtown uh, parking contract, our advice from our lawyers and our procurement experts was that we were going to have to undertake another contract, which meant that we were technically that, that one of our options was to go to market and so potentially end up with a separate, uh, an, an, an additional um, uh, parking consultant. And so what we did was something called a notice of intent where we put a notice on VC bid and said, we intend to work with Robbins parking for this second contract um, based on these ideas. So basically we're following best practices for procurement. So now I have two contracts. Uh, the offshore parking uh, program, again, sort of lies outside of Robbins uh, and uh, they can manage it uh, for us uh, and they may, they will be assisting us in making sure that the people that are parking in the offshore parking passes, uh, the uh, spaces have uh, 
have uh, parking passes. They, they will be assisting us with that. It's my hope. Uh, the reason, so sorry, and jumping back to the, the two contracts, the second contract we entered into Robin for the downtown parking program expires at the, roughly the same time as the beach parking program. At that point, the district will be going back out to market uh, for a three-year contract that would encompass all uh, encompass the, the two systems, which also does encompass the offshore parking uh, a little bit. Uh, what exactly that looks like, I don't know. Um, I'm, I'm sort of focused on the next four weeks. Uh, and then, you know, through the fall, start thinking more seriously about what that might look like. Thanks, Aaron. So the next one is about motorhomes, and it says motorhomes take up a lot of space and thus parking spots in the village core. Could the district develop lots for these large vehicles outside the village core while encouraging these folks to walk, bike, or use a shuttle? Yeah, great question. A question uh, I think I've struggled with for, for almost 15 years um, about RV parking. We have some very specific pol parking policy in the parking policy about RVs and where they should be located. Uh, also in the in the multimodal transportation plan. Currently, we try to push them uh, to the outskirts of the downtown core. So, you know, along uh, Gibson Street, for example, or uh, up third. Uh, the the Robbins parking system is going to charge is where is we're going to limit where RVs can park. So probably primarily those areas, possibly also down by the community hall. And the, the cost to park an RV is going to be different than the cost to park a car. So that if, if someone is parking an RV, it won't be a car rate, it'll be an RV rate. So that's one way to encourage RV uh, uh, drivers if they're staying in town to to, to stay at the resorts uh, and potentially bike, walk, or bus in. The, the question of um, like, lots is a, is an interesting one and one i wouldn't mind just talking about it for a little bit here something that has come up uh it comes up every year um people often ask me why don't, why don't we build a parkade or why don't we just develop a lot the answer is we don't have a lot to, to develop and, and even if we did have a lot to develop i would argue that that lot would be uh would be something that we'd probably use for housing rather, rather than cars um but even again that means that we just don't have a lot it doesn't exist uh so in, unless someone you know, donates us a lot uh, that we can use for parking. It's just something that we probably can't think about for a number of years. And uh, yeah, so I think that's uh, the best answer I can give there. Happy to, with any follow-up. Thanks, Aaron. Uh, we still don't have any attendees with their hands up, so I'll keep asking questions that have been submitted. The next one is, why do you think that before 10 and after six covers off all the residents of Tofino to do their downtown business? Uh, great question. I, I don't know that it does or it doesn't. It's it's a it's a it's a t the, the the 1999 parking plan was suggests that your your midday times you know if you're 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. are the times that are the busiest. Uh, that's a 1999 plan. Uh, as a resident of the downtown core, I can tell you anecdotally that town it gets busy about 10 and it stops being busy around six. Uh, so it's not necessarily about considering expecting the residents to get their work done at time. It's just when town town is busy, whether it be from residents doing certain tasks at a time or visitors coming down to the downtown core. Thank you. So the next one says, how can we go forward in good conscience knowing that Keppel Street is exempt when we only have one more road in the commercial district? How can we go forward? Uh, I think we can go forward because the the opportunity uh, to to make some changes, you know, to meet those objectives that you know that I've repeated uh, often during this this meeting, uh, happen when we we move through pay parking. This the the, the projections for this uh, program are, as I said, two hundred thirty thousand dollars net revenue next year. It will pull pe get people out of their cars. It will provide spaces for people who need to who who need to park in the downtown core. I think the conversation at Campbell Street is a conversation that um that is that that is uh on rate like the radar of staff uh, to try to understand a little bit better and, and see you know what kind of uh where we might go with that with the province um but uh, i think not going forward uh and not meeting those objectives um you know wouldn't be meeting the, the expectations that council set out you know for for us as a, as a staff uh what our ocp and our, and our other policies on transportation speak to so I think that for that, I think that's how I, we can go forward in, in good conscience. Aaron, um, some may have 
uh, come in late, and I know you mentioned it in your presentation, but we we don't have the ability to uh, to implement pay parking on Campbell Street because we don't own that road. It is highways, and it um, turns on First Street and goes down to First Street Dock. So those are the areas that we we don't have the ability to to install um, the program. Thanks, Anna. The next question is, will there be times of day when people cannot park? For example, the beach is quote unquote open 7 a.m. until 11 p.m. During the summer when having a fire, for example, sometimes leaving at 11 p.m. seems early. I'm wondering if people will be able to park early in the morning to access kayak trips and for fitness purposes. Will people be able to park late at night for shows and bars? The short answer is yes. Uh, there is, uh, you know, uh, regulations in Tofino about not camping overnight um, uh, in your in your vehicles, uh, but the district of Tofino is not going to be too concerned about people uh, staying out late. Uh, the regulations allow for it or, or getting somewhere early. Thank you. The next question is, how are you encouraging cycling in both residents and visitors? Will more cycling parking racks be available and ready for a shift in transportation by those that are able? That's a fabulous question. I, something I thought about yesterday, walking into council chambers and and noticing uh, the racks starting to get full and realizing that if this program is successful, we're going to need to have racks ready to go. So um, some of the things that we are doing and I have done in the past five years is, is direct our, our RMI revenues towards uh, improvements of the multi-use path. So every year, pretty much ongoing now, you'll see the widening and improvement of that path uh, through to the end of the district. Uh, obviously, we 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 completed the fairly large project that connected us uh, to the park uh, to, to the district area uh, about three or four years ago, uh, and we can we will be continuing to to improve areas. One of the uh, improved cycling uh, opportunities. Uh, again, if we, if we are able to reinvest some of this, these funds back in infrastructure, my, it's my expectation that we'll 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 circle back to the downtown core to ensure that cycling gets better in the downtown core and primarily that walking becomes a lot easier and a lot safer understanding that it's you know the place where uh you know our, our children go to school and and other people access uh, services every day it's it's there's parts of downtown that are that are embarrassing um but i take your point um it's in my notes to consider cycling additional cycling racks ready to go um, i appreciate that i really appreciate that comment So Aaron, the next question says, hello, thank you for highlighting the positive outcomes of implementing pay parking downtown. My assumption is that district staff have researched other small tourist driven communities who have longer term pay parking programs. Can you speak on the known negative impacts of this sort of implementation on the community? Understanding both sides should help us all prepare. It's a, a great question. Uh, I have not. Uh, I, uh, I, I, there's no excuses. Um, I've stepped in this role and, and been asked to put in this process. And so I'm moving forward with uh, the existing system. Uh, I think it's a, a great suggestion and, and uh, I'll follow up by uh, reaching out to uh, uh, communities that have, to have done this uh, or are currently doing it to, to understand the negative impacts. Um, one thing I might uh, add is that, you know, the negative impacts on a community for the beach parking are, are not great. But I do understand they're not that's because we've allowed everybody to park there for free. So um, I, I, I appreciate the question and uh, please reach out to me uh, if I haven't followed up with you, but I'll, I'll uh, it's, it's in my list of sticky notes here to, to do that. The next question asks, hundreds or perhaps thousands of cars drive into the village core every day during the busy season from major resorts. Could the district not make it a requirement for the major fixed route fixed roof establishments prior to getting a business license to provide a shuttle to reduce the congestion and take pressure off the limited number of parking spots? Another good question. Uh, I'm not sure that our, our business license powers extend that far, uh, but something that I, I'll, I, can, I can definitely look into. I know in the past, when I've been involved with conversations about parking, uh, that has come up. Uh, no one seems to up, uh, have, have taken that up, uh, but it, it, it's something I maybe I can I could speak with the Chamber of Commerce about tomorrow as a, as a potential just idea to try to get an understanding from the resorts, uh, you know how that might affect them, and then I'd have to just also follow up uh, 
work with the, uh, the, the local government act and to see if that's a, a power that that we may be able to use in business licensing. I suspect it's not, but uh, I can definitely do the, uh, the research. Thanks, Mary. The next question says, from my understanding, the district is currently not able to ticket visitors who break parking rules because they do not send any fines to a collection agency. In a sense, the district can only issue tickets with fines to locals. Will Robbins Parking be able to issue tickets to visitors who break parking time limits and be more able to enforce car space turnover? Yes, we do so already. Uh, Robbins takes care of all ticketing and it's not, it's ticketing uh, across the province, not, not just for uh, Tofino residents. Okay, thanks for that. The next question asks, is, resident, is residential, are residential streets going to be overrun by people trying to find free parking, taking up residences home parking? How will bylaw know if it's a tourist parking or a resident? A great question. Uh, yeah, so part of the reason pay parking is extending as far as it is in through the residential areas of the downtown core is to try to stop the flow of people from, uh, from, uh, pay parking to timed parking. Uh, and so uh, if there are resident passes, well, if we if we issue downtown resident passes, there'll be a process where you can register your, your vehicle for your unit and park on the street and then you won't be you won't be ticketed. Thanks, Aaron. The next question is if you want tourism not to come during peak hours, then why not have the time frame be 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. so that locals can come down to do shopping for dinner and post office? Isn't it penalizing to locals to encourage them only to work after hours? Uh, can you just repeat that one, Jamie? Sorry, I think there's two questions there. So make sure I, get, I, mean, I, just, I can answer the first one first. Sure. It says, if you want tourism not to come during peak hours, then why not have the time frame be 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. so that locals can come down to do shopping for dinner and post office? Isn't it penalizing to locals to encourage them only after work hours? Um, how do I answer this question? So obviously uh, the, the district the district is, is basically setting up a system that um, that charges a park in the, in the, in the downtown core, uh, in charging parking for the downtown core, uh, in portions of the downtown core, there'll be also obviously free parking, uh, in the downtown. Um, we expect to, to meet our objectives. It's, it's, there's, there's no intent to penalize, uh, the, uh, it, you know, I guess I, that's the easiest way to say this. There is no intent to penalize, uh, people. And I don't know what everybody's schedules are in Tofino, um, there is people work um, many different shifts in Tofino and ha have different lives. So developing a program that works for every single person here is difficult. So um, based on our, you know, our knowledge of how busy it is in the downtown core, uh, when the most parking is there, uh, based on the studies we've done, that's why we've selected 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Again, at this point, everything is up for conversation. So if 10 to 4 works, you know, better for, 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 the, for the person who's asked the question, um, I'm happy if they would email me and let me know that. I, I haven't heard anybody yet discuss, really discuss like an alternative uh, time period. The the concern being, uh, and it's not a large concern, but if you're having, it's just a reduction potentially in, in parking revenues, um, but maybe not either, because maybe we're having very few people who are parking for the full eight hours. And and maybe by going to six, you, you, you may see, you, you may see similar revenues, but again, something, uh, if, if the person who wrote it was happy to email me, I'll definitely look into it and, uh, and try to get back to you. Thanks, Aaron. The next question asks, is there a reason why all the timed and pay spots aren't combined and then locals given a free pass per person? Local passes are not lost revenue, they are an expense, so less profit, but shouldn't be considered revenue. I don't know that that's a confusing question to me. I can, I guess, let's, let's try to break that down. Or now, now the finance, <laughs> ex finance director wants to answer that question. Perfect. Yeah. Um, so I think when we're, when we're tying resident, you know, the possibility of resident passes to revenue, um, the, part of that conversation is about if a resident comes downtown and takes a uses a resident pass to park in a, a spot that would otherwise be paid parking, then um, we lose the ability to generate revenue from that spot. So 
what I said earlier is we need to find a balance that um, where the system still works if resident passes um, for those that live outside the downtown were to be a thing um, because we we need to consider what the revenue loss would be then for the spots that are paid parking if a resident takes one of those spots. Um, we understand that they were, there would be a fee or let's say, well, maybe, maybe I shouldn't um, assume that, but if there is a fee attached to resident passes, then um, some of that will make up for some of that revenue loss, but, but not all of it. So that's, that's the balancing decision that we have to make here if we want to go in that direction. So I, I, I believe, Samantha, that was, that was your question, but, but do feel free to put your hand up and we can get some more clarity on, on what you're asking. Thanks, Milo. The next, um, so the next one I'm going to read out is, um, it's a, it's a bit of a comment and then there, there's a question in it. So in a house it, we have about 205 homes. If we say one car per home, there already isn't enough parking for permit offshore parking. How does this impact communities or residents in Tofino? There already isn't enough parking as is. There was zero consultation with the impact of people who live very differently than residents in Tofino and tourists. Residents in a house that travel by boat in all weather conditions. Think of elder and disability who constantly have to walk blocks in the rain. Um, it's great, great comments. Um, yeah, I, 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 I don't have a, 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 I don't have anything to say, any answer to to, to the comments. I, I can say that the we've tried to um, like since the time we've been here, we, we've we've increased uh, offshore uh parking a, a little bit um but again we're facing you know constraints as, as well on our side as in the sense we have a very limited land base and as the house it has continued to grow so so is tofino and, and so is to look at first nation and and so are this so so are the uh, the businesses so um i think it's a problem um that we're gonna have to solve together uh and uh, and that's probably through a continued dialogue and and potentially getting the federal and provincial governments interested in in helping uh, helping us solve you know this issue. I I, I don't know what else to say other than, other than I, I really do appreciate the uh, the comments. Thanks, Erin. So we do have one member of the public that has their hand up. So I'll go to that person, uh, Laura McDonald. So Laura, I'm going to promote you to a panelist, and you can control your video and um, and your microphone. Well, hi, Aaron. Um, uh, yep. Can you hear me okay? Yep, got you, Laura. Thanks. Okay. How are you doing? Good. Thanks so much. Hey, looking forward to having you tomorrow morning. Thanks for joining us at the chamber level. Um, just, I was wondering if there was any like abilities for us to say, everyone have an hour of parking a day as a resident, you know, to go in. Because I don't think any resident would spend, wants to spend any more than an hour. <laughs> in town generally, or like some limit of like, you know, we register our license plates, we get 60 minutes a day to go in, run run our errands, you know, and get out. And then we use the alternative methods. Like, would that ever be a possibility? Yeah, it's, it's a great question. One that I actually ran down with Robbins this morning. I've been going back and forth with them for a couple of days on that, on that exact topic. Uh, before I get into the answer to that specific question, I would just say like there, there's the I think there's two resident needs that I'm aware of. There's the one need, which is you know I need to get downtown for an hour to do my groceries, post office, liquor store, whatever you're doing, and then the second need is the employee, the resident employee need who can't get downtown, can't get to work without a car, um, and so which tends to be a longer parking concern, you know. So I you know so that's the, those I think those are the two separate ones. There's like Mm -hmm. I need to be at work for four to six hours or eight hours, and I need to get in and get out of town. Uh, so in terms of the second, uh, the first one, so in terms of the hour parking, I don't think we can do what you're suggesting. I thought we may be able to do it. I, um, so I asked Robbins, can we run an hour or two hour per day resident parking pass? I don't think administratively or technologically we can, we can solve that as our parking program is currently uh, set up. Uh, that's the short answer. There's a longer answer that <laughs> Robbins provided me that included, you know, providing codes to everybody who had a resident pass. So you could punch in a code, 
but the administration of that gets quite uh, uh, difficult quite quickly. It's something that Island Health has been experimenting with for a number of years, and they still haven't they haven't cracked that nut. Uh, so uh, it's a great it's a great suggestion. Um, I probably will be following up with Robbins just to make sure that we can't uh, do something like that. But from what I understand, it's it's not that it's not as easy as, we, as it seems to us outside of the uh, the parking sphere, unfortunately. Okay, thanks, Aaron. And yeah, I'm looking forward to talking about the employee thing tomorrow morning. Certainly, that was just my, my resident hat on. <laughs> yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah, thanks so much. Thanks, Laura. So Aaron, the next question asks, how does the district plan on handling vandalism? Ooh, good question. Ooh. I've heard I've heard that as well. Um, Robbins Parking uh, is the uh, is our parking consultant. Uh, they own those meters. Uh, they take care of, of vandalism, so that's that's included in in their contract. And so, if there is vandalism to occur uh, on those on the devices or or, or on the signs or something like that, it would be uh, you know Robbins would be would be dealing that with through the proper authorities and and whatever means that they have. Yeah, um, I'll use this as an opportunity, I think, to address vandalism. I mean, it's something that, you know, outside of, it's interesting that it's coming up as part of this program. I know, uh, I know what the history has been here with, um, with pay parking, um, but it's something municipalities deal with across the board. There's, there's vandalisms in all areas. And I, you know, I, I like to think that I live in a community where, um, where residents respect their community and, and understand that the cost of, of vandalism really comes back to the resident. And it's just an unfortunate circumstance when we have to deal with something like that. Um, it's, not, it's not often that the municipality gets to address that when we see it, but uh, it's a reality that we deal with. We're dealing it with now, now in other areas of the community. And at the end of the day, it just it just costs us more to um, to manage and, and handle the situation. And I think that um, those that have lived here for a while, you know, that there's some areas of town that we're currently experiencing it, and it's it's unfortunate. And so I just um, you know there are there are ways to handle it, but it's just an unfortunate thing when someone disrespects their community like that. It's not a community I think any of us want to live in. And maybe I could just do one follow up to that, Jamie, which is, again, I think as many of us probably were on this call around for the last time pay parking came downtown and, and the issues or the vandalism issues that occurred at that time. That was a time before cell phones and pay by phone. So damaging the infrastructure of the, of the, of the uh, damaging Robbins infrastructure and the, the kiosk is not going to stop pay parking this time. Um, this is what pay by phone is for. This is what honk is for. So I just would caution anybody, you know, who's heard that <laughs> to just consider that the, the, the program will exist regardless of whether we have the infrastructure in the ground or not. Thanks, Nyla and Aaron. The next question is, will overnight gravel, will overnight gravel parking lot, will the overnight gravel parking lot remain for multi-day um, people to park? Yes, and priced appropriately so uh, that it, it, it encourages long-term parking. Thank you. So the next one says, will you clue that residents, residents um, who have been pushed out by the housing crisis but have maintained their working positions for years, those who own businesses and do the daily commute from Yuki as well as do banking and grocery shops for the businesses be given a free downtown parking pass? Uh, they would not be given a free downtown parking pass, but if there was a resident parking, a resident permit program place, they would most likely be included in, in, in that, uh, that area. I think if you know again, I would speak to the to the employee parking to part of that question, which is if you own a business, I'm I'm hoping that you have parking on a lot, then not to place for you to for you to park. Uh, and then again, uh, there'll be the free parking, the, the 230 spots of free parking downtown, uh, and parking at, at most businesses as well. Thanks, Aaron. So the next question is. A parking system like the successful beach parking program should be year round all day for simple communication and more tourist revenue to offset covering resident passes. Um, and they've got one resident pass per person as an example, as an expense of the system. Do you want me to repeat that? 
So a parking system like the success, successful beach parking program should be year round all day for simple communication and more tourist revenue to offset covering resident passes as an, as an expense of the system. I think okay. what the the uh, uh, the question is asking is, can we run the downtown par parking pa uh, program 12 months of the year? Uh, I think we generated about an additional $100,000 a year in revenue, I think is what the original projections were for that. But at the same time, uh, providing parking for residents free year round. It's a great question. Um, I have, again, haven't run the numbers on a resident pass yet, so I can't answer it completely, but I, uh, I do appreciate the, the, the thought. I can comment on, on the current Beach Bay parking program. We do run a deficit in in the, I guess, less, you know, less busy, lower season months. Um, so some of that, you know, the cost of, of continuing the contract and running it over certain months may not, may not make sense, but no, we have not run the numbers on, on 12 months per year for downtown parking. Thanks, Nyla. Um, so I just want to point out that it is, uh, it's 5.50, so we have about 10 minutes left, and we do have, um, we've got a number of questions to, to still get through that have been submitted, so um, I'll try to get through as many as we can now, and then just so everybody knows, um, we're going to take note of all the questions that we weren't able to answer, and uh, and we'll, we'll post those to talk to Fino, so you'll see those up there um, within it within a day um, so staff will be able to answer those questions and you'll be able to see them um, on talk to fino so the next the next question is if it's determined by council to vote for free passes to all residents and the parking revenues do not meet expectations or district requirements as one of three interests to make the program successful are there any financial penalties to the district from ending or breaking a contract with robbins for parking management um, again, I can speak to a high level to the contract. Um, you know, we're in, we're in contract for for one year, for one year. It's a one year contract, uh, and so um, yeah, we're committed to do what we've we've said to do. Uh, I don't there there's no. I think I'll just stop there. But it's it, it. I don't know if contract stuff gets a little bit uh, dicey. Uh, yeah, I think that's probably all we can we can answer for now. Okay, thanks, Nyla. So the next question is, I see that Tofino wants to encourage people to take the shuttle to town. Is the shuttle timeframe going to be extended so it doesn't just run from the end of June to the end of August, therefore giving an option for people to get into town? Uh, it would be, uh, we, we would hope to be able to do that. Um, again, that would require additional funding to, to be able to extend that or uh, so something I think that definitely will be uh, under consideration by council uh, at the budget meeting. But at this point, there's, uh, there's no plans to extend it uh, currently under the current uh, budget. Thanks, Aaron. The next question is, why do residents living downtown need a downtown parking pass? All residents do, but more so residents south of industrial. Yeah, no, it's a it's a it's a great question. There's a there's a there's definitely a, a a perception of unfairness there. Uh, so the thinking behind a downtown parking pass is that uh, in an in an area that has fairly small lots compared to to many other parts of the community, uh, especially in the areas and primarily in the areas where we have our our townhouse type developments, uh, the, a lot of those areas only have one parking spot behind them, and we may have a family of four. Or you know, three roommates. And so for decades, uh, residents in certain areas of the downtown core have parked on the street. The intent was to provide some sort of uh, time frame uh, uh, for these, for people to make an adjustment to their lifestyle if they needed to, uh, to allow for somebody who may be working as say, an electrician, working out of a townhouse who has a, uh, a commercial vehicle that they, they may need for work. So sort of to accommodate that because they right now or for years they've been using that. The intent would probably be over time to increase the cost of those permits uh, and potentially wind them back, but that would be like more of a, you know, three to five year or you know five to ten year type of type of process. So that, that's the thinking. Uh, is 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 that a lot of people have used that parking uh, for years? 
Thanks, Erin. I'm going to go to, um, I'm going to jump into the attendee list. I see that um, Jason Hutchinson has their hand up. So Jason, I'm just going to promote you to a panelist now and you'll be able to unmute yourself and control your video. Hi, Jason, you've been promoted to a panelist. So if you if you do have a question, you can unmute yourself and share your video if you'd like. Okay, I may I may just remove um, you as a panelist. I'm gonna remove Jason. And uh, if you're having technical difficulties, please feel free to just raise your hand again or, or you can ask a question through the Q&A function. Oh, we have Jason. There we go. Okay. <laughs> Jason, uh, you're muted. Hi, Jason. You're still muted. Um, you might be getting a prompt. I'm, I'm prompting you here to unmute. So you might be seeing something come up on your Zoom screen to to allow yourself to unmute. We'll, we'll give you another another minute here, Jason, to try to unmute yourself. And then it, if you're not able to, then I, I might just remove you just because we have only a couple minutes left before the end of the session. Sorry about that, Jason. Um, please feel free to submit your question through the Q&A or you can um, direct your question directly to Erin through parking at defino.ca. I'm really sorry that we weren't able to get your, your audio on there. So Erin, the next question is, um, how many free offshore permits does the district give out? Uh, depending on the year, between 200 and 250. Thank you. And another question is, if after this process, it's determined that there are more questions than answers regarding feasibility and implementation of the downtown pay parking program, is the district willing to push the start date until the answers are more clearly known? Or is it essential to implement as soon as possible? Uh, the former. Uh, we'd like to get this uh, as right as we can before we, to we proceed. Uh, we're hoping that the, the length of time we have for consultations is a pretty long consultation period of about six weeks is sufficient uh, and it'll be it'll be an iterative process so um, we will push it if we need to um, but we're hoping that this that we can get most of the, the questions uh, answered as um, satisfactory thanks Aaron so the next question is how many parking spots are in the downtown core <sighs> great question uh, depending on what document you look at but I'm using the multimodal transportation plan uh, and a couple of older plans, and I'm estimating, and I I know it should be an, an easy answer, but it's about 800 spaces. Uh, 400 of those will be, uh, it's all approximate numbers, 400 will be timed. Uh, 110 will be uh, offshore parking as currently exists, and there'll be 290 free parking spots in the downtown core. Thanks, Aaron. I think we have time for a couple more questions. So the next one is, I am for a parking plan that targets, targets tourists, but not one that charges residents. No matter how you phrase it, charging residents is punitive and piling on yet more cost to living here. Saying this is user pay is misleading and doesn't take into account all those who simply have to use a vehicle to shop for large families or because of health problems that prevent other modes of transport or have jobs downtown, et cetera. These people don't have a choice and will therefore be penalized. 
wouldn't it be a simple solution? Wouldn't a simple solution be to just offer free passes to residents, regardless of the potential potential drop in income from the program? Again, your priority is to make things better for locals, not worse. Comments aside, um, offering a resident pass may defeat the whole purpose of of, of, of running the system. And again, I am not we're not attempting the district is not attempting to penalize our residents. Thanks, Aaron. So um, one more question here is from everything I've read from the feedback of residents, it seems as if all residents want is at least one free parking pass per resident. Why is this not possible? Uh, everything is possible, uh, but it's the, the the impacts of 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 that possibility that are concerning uh, to myself uh, uh, in trying to get this program uh, implemented and, and to meet the objectives that we've stated that we want to meet. So. Uh, there, I would say that if anything seems park, uh, simple in parking, it's most likely incorrect because there's nothing simple about parking. Uh, it's a complicated, more than you can imagine, um, uh, uh, issue. It's, there's, there's competing needs. There's constrained spaces. Um, it's, 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 a, it's a tough field to work in. Definitely not simple. Thanks, Aaron. I appreciate that. Um, it is six o'clock now, so we are going to end the session. And we, again, we really appreciate everyone who's added their voice tonight and through Talk to Fino and through email and, and letters. Um, it, it, park, pay parking really is a complex issue and, and we appreciate everybody's feedback to try and help us get it right. Um, we are going to be recording the questions that didn't get answered from Q&A. And, and like I mentioned before, we'll upload those to Talk to Fino. So you can, you can head on there tomorrow and hopefully we can have them up there by then. And uh, just lastly, if you feel like your question wasn't answered fully or you have other questions, please feel free to email Aaron Rogers directly at parking at tofino.ca and he'll get back to you as soon as he, as soon as he can. So thank you very much, everyone. Um, Aaron, do you have anything else to add before we before we sign off? Again, just thanks for uh, the feedback. Thanks for coming to the meeting. Um, everything that you that you've written, everything that you said today, uh, will be considered. Uh, nothing at this point is off the table, uh, and so I really do appreciate you, you taking the time uh, out of your busy days to 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 come today. And I look forward to seeing you in two weeks. Thanks so much, everyone. Have a good night.